Hi, my name is Grant Wood. I'm one of the brewers with Sam Adams. Uh, welcome to our brewery. I have a degree in uh, food science and technology from Texas A&M University, and I've been a brewmaster with Sam Adams for 15 years. Can't wait to show you around. We'll show you some ingredients, show you how we make the beer. If you guys uh, like, we'll do a little tasting as well. Come on in the brewery. What I've got here are the basic ingredients in our beer. The first one, at Sam Adams we use two-row malting barley. This is our pale malt. All of our beers have this malt in it in some fashion, somewhere anywhere between from 50% to 100%. The other major ingredient that we have right here is our hops. The hop is a bine, not a vine. It likes to wind around wires. It's got kind of a gold dust in the interior. Those are the lupulin glands. That's where all the flavor compounds, the humulones, the humulines, cohumulone, adhumulone, all the things that add flavor and bitterness to beer are packed into those little resin beads. The next one obviously is water. We want to make sure that the water that we have is clean and free of all flavors, organics that might have come out of groundwater. The other thing is important about water is the amount of minerals that are in there. You can really uh, affect the flavor and mouthfeel of the beer with the amount of minerals. The most important ingredient in the beer is the yeast. The yeast decide whether the beer is going to be an ale or whether it's going to be a lager. Those are the basic four ingredients. Now we know a little bit about those four ingredients. We can head over to the brew house and we can talk about how we put those into the process. We think of it as the four vessel brewing process. We do what's called a decoction mashing. Mash is the process of breaking down complex carbohydrates, the starches, into simple sugars. So what we do, we've measured out our amount of malt, we've ground it in a mill to crush it but not turn it into a flour. And then we take a portion of that malt and add that with water into the first vessel, which we call the mash kettle. That we start at 122 degrees, turn the steam on, and bring that to a boil. Meanwhile, in the next vessel, which is called the mash tun, we take the rest of the malt, again some more water at 122 degrees, and we place that into the mash tun and allow that to rest. That's called the protein rest. When the mash kettle reaches boil, we transfer that over into the mash tun in a process called decoction. You're pushing this over, raising the temperature very rapidly inside the mash tun. This does a couple of things. One is it holds the enzymes back. And so by limiting and killing the enzymes and slowing them down a bit by this rapid temperature rise, we hold on to some of the bigger chunks of carbohydrate that are called dextrins, which give the beer body and a very mild sweetness. So now this mash looks like oatmeal, basically. There's a lot of husk material in there. There's some grain material. We have to take it over to the strainer, which is this vessel right here called the lauder tun. The mash goes over into that. We allow the wort at this point to trickle down through this bed of uh, spent grain. And we collect that solution of simple sugars. So we come back over to this vessel. We turn the steam on, bring the wort to a boil. And at that point, the third ingredient goes in, which is the hops. As you subject hops to the heat, those lupulin glands that I talked about, that I showed you, that gold dust that's in there, those melt. It extracts these compounds out that are called alpha acids that give beer its characteristic bitterness. And the longer you boil them, the more of those are converted and the more bitter your beer will become. And then at the end, we're adding more hops in that don't get uh, as long a boil, and that part of the hop contributes the volatile oils that have the flavor compounds of the hops in them. So, boiling for an hour and a half, send it over to the whirlpool where we allow the hop material to settle out of the beer and then decant this clear wort that has, again, the solution of simple sugars, there's some proteins in there, and the uh, hop compounds that have also come out. And it's transferred into one of these stainless steel vessels over here. Yeast is added and fermentation begins. So what we've done in the brew house is we've created this yeast food, this solution of simple sugars. Yeast's living, breathing microorganism that eats the sugars, the simple sugars like glucose, maltose, and maltotriose that we've made in the brew house, and converts that into alcohol, carbon dioxide, and about 600 other flavor compounds that the yeast produce from their metabolism. And so this process of fermentation takes four or five days until it's complete. 
All that's left is the unfermentable sugar, the dextrins that give beer body. There's a lot of sulfur, there's some aldehydes, it's just rough and um, really not really ready for consumption. So, what we, what we do is we actually run it through a second fermentation process. Croizing is like sending in a cleanup crew. It helps smooth off some of the rough edges, and get rid of some of the harsh characteristics, and add some smoothness and sweetness to the beer. And then the beer is sent over into aging, where we actually add more hops in a cold process to the aging process. And it adds these very light and delicate hop aromas that we might have lost in the brew house back into the beer in the aging process. And now we're ready to filter it and put it in a keg or put it in a bottle and uh, send it out to you guys to taste. Modern microbiology was led by Louis Pasteur. Pasteur worked with brewers primarily. Yeasts you could see under the microscope. You couldn't really see bacteria, but you could see the yeast. And so with the advent of that knowledge, you could actually select what yeast you wanted and produce um, what kind of beer and be very specific about the flavors that you wanted and also about the consistency because you could reproduce that same yeast over and over again and not have contaminants come in. Modern brewing technology, um, if we think of beer as it is today, uh, that was really also the advent of modern science. The selection of yeasts happens in the late 1800s with the creation of the lager beer. Um, ales have been made since the dawn of man. Lager is a, is a creation of science and the selection of yeast specifically good for brewing in cooler temperatures and producing clear and crisp beers. It's a good day's work.